This tutorial is sponsored by Boris Effects. Hello video creators, welcome to Storyshim. In today's tutorial we're going to recreate this logo reveal animation in Adobe Premiere Pro. I made this animation using the Boris FX Particle Illusion plugin. This Particle Illusion is part of the Continuum bundle. This is a huge collection of video editing assets and plugins for the real pros and is used in many big Hollywood productions. It can be used in tools like Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe After Effects and as I mentioned in this tutorial we're going to use Premiere Pro. Today we're only touching on the basics of Particle Illusion because there's a lot more you can do with this awesome tool, especially if you combine this with 3D tools like After Effects. And by the way, for what we're doing today, you don't need a subscription on Boris FX if you do a little workaround, which I'll tell you more about later on in the video. Okay, now it's time to start installing some software. First, you need to create a free account on Boris FX. After that, install Continuum for Adobe, including Particle Illusion. After that, we'll also download and install the free standalone Particle Illusion. Installing both versions is part of the workaround, you'll see why later on. Anyway, after installing both versions, it's time to boot up Premiere and start some editing. Inside Premiere, we're going to start by adding some text. You can do this with the Type tool, which you can find here, or hit the T key to enable it. And then you can just left-click somewhere in the Program Monitor and start typing. In this case, I will type Iron. If you're done typing, you can go back to the Selection tool by clicking this icon here, and then resize the text. And then I'll move over to the Essential Graphics panel to center the text by clicking these two icons here. As you can see here, I'm using the Ethnocentric font. It's a free font, I will add the link in the description so you can check it out. In the next step, we're going to add an effect. In the Effects panel, I'm going to search for the BCC Particle Illusion effect. And this is the effect from the Continuum Pack for Adobe that we installed earlier. Let's drag this effect over to the text layer on the timeline. You can directly see this red cross watermark on top of the text, and that is because we don't have an active license on Boris FX Continuum. But as I mentioned, you don't need this for now, and again, more on this later on. For now, we'll just click on Launch Particle Illusion here in the Effect Controls panel, and this will boot up Particle Illusion in a separate window. For most of you watching, you've probably never seen this interface before, so let's do a quick tour. In the left bottom corner, you can select an emitter, and this can be previewed here in the top left panel. And by the way, there are hundreds of emitters included in Particle Illusion, and today we're going to use this one, Sparkfire with Smoke number 4. Next, here in the middle, which is empty now, you will find the controls, you'll see soon enough. Besides that, here in the top right corner, you can preview the results of your project, similar to the program monitor in Premiere. And by the way, to be able to see the text from Premiere, you need to set this option to composite over source video. And below that you can find the so-called notes view, this will give you a logical overview of your project items. And then on top here you've got a few buttons, but the only one that we're going to use for this tutorial is the deflector button. If you click this button, you will get this red deflector line. A reflector will interact with an emitter, just like with the sparks in this example. Now we're going to position a few of these deflectors on top of the text. We can now zoom in by using the scroll wheel on the mouse and then select the red dots of the deflector line to reposition it. And we're going to place this first deflector on top of the letter R. Ok, let's now add a few more deflectors and we can do this by simply hitting the button on top again. You can now also see the deflectors that we added here in the notes view. I'm going to reposition these deflectors as well. And in this case we're going to add this on the rounded top of the letter O. And this means that we need to add some more deflector points. We can do this by holding the ALT or COMMAND key on the Mac and then a left click on the line. And then if you've got enough points you can start repositioning the deflector. I think that this feels somewhat similar to masking inside Premiere. Anyway, for the best results take your time and do this as precise as possible. For the sake of this tutorial I'm going to fast forward so you don't have to wait. As you can see, I've now added multiple deflectors and it should look something like this. Of course you can add more if you like to. And now it's time to add an emitter. As I mentioned I'm going to add the Spark Fire with Smoke number 4. You can double click on the emitter to add it to the project. Sometimes you need to click 3 times to add it to the project. Not sure why, but so that you know. Now the emitter has been added and if I move a couple of frames forward you can see it here in the center. It's still too small to use for a logo reveal, so let's change that. 
First, make sure you've got the emitter selected like this and then go to the properties and then change the shape into a line. You can now left click in the frame to turn the emitter into a line. You could also add a second point, but that's not what we want here, so I'll just hit the escape key. As you can see here, we've now got a lot of options to tweak this further. I will change the size for the emitter, so the bright center will be a little smaller. Something like this looks nice. In the next steps, we'll come to animate the emitter. I will reposition it just out of the frame like this. And then I'm going to add the keyframe by clicking this icon here and then selecting Bezier. This Bezier keyframe will make the animation a bit more smoother compared to the linear keyframe option. Next I'm going to move a couple of frames forward and then move the emitter to the other side of the frame. This will create the second keyframe. If I now scrub to the timeline, you can see the animation that we just created with these two keyframes. Ok perfect, let's now adjust some settings and we'll start with the sparks. I will select the sparks here and then go into the properties and then change the color. You can now click on one of the gradient colors and then pick something else, in this case I'll go for orange. Select the color, then click on OK, and then after that click on Apply. Next we're going to change the shape of the sparks. If you click on this image icon here in the properties menu, this will open up a new window where you can choose from a lot of other shapes. In this case I will select Blurred Spiky Star, and you can see the difference here right away. Let's click on Apply. As you can see these sparks are a little smaller, so let's increase the size here. It may take a few seconds to render, but here we've got the results. I also want the sparks to live long enough to hit the ground, so we're going to increase the life value. Let's set it to 15 first, so we can change this later on if needed. And then after rendering, you can see that a lot more sparks will make it to the ground here. If you want, you can change a lot more settings here as you can see, but for now we'll just leave it to this. If I now scrub to the timeline, you can see that the sparks are reacting to the deflectors that we've added, and this looks very cool. But I also think that it might look even better if we add another deflector on the bottom, as a floor for the sparks to land on. So let's click on the deflector button to add another one, and then move this to the bottom like this. And then with the deflector selected, I'm going to head over to the properties, and I'm going to increase the thickness. And then also maybe increase the bounce value to make the sparks jump a little higher. Let's hit spacebar to give this a playback, and as you can see the sparks are now falling on the ground. However, I think that it might look even better if we increase the thickness a bit more. Something like this should be more than enough. Let's give it another playback, and now it looks perfect. I also wanted to show you that if you don't want to use all the parts of an emitter, you can simply delete the part by selecting them here in the notes view and then hit the delete key. Ok, there is one more thing that I want to adjust here, and that is the color of the smoke. I'm going to select this here and then in the properties menu I'm going to pick a new color. In this case I'll go for something grey. Maybe you've already noticed that when you make a change this is rendered directly and this goes pretty fast as well. So if I now scrub forward you can directly see the results of our adjustments. The smoke is grey and looks perfect. Ok, now we're done here in particle illusion. If you have an active subscription on Boris FX then you can click apply here and go back to Premiere. But in case you don't have an active subscription, then you need to do a little workaround, which I mentioned before. Let me show you how. You need to start by saving this project somewhere on your hard drive. You need to go to File and then select Save Project As. Then select a folder and give it a name and click Save. And now you can also click Apply here in the right bottom corner to close Particle Illusion. And after that, we're going to start up the free standalone version of Particle Illusion. Once this has started, we can head over to File and then select Open Project. Then select the project file that you just saved and click Open. As you can see here, the animation looks exactly the same. The only difference is the source text from Premiere is not visible. Because we've loaded the project in the free version, we can now export this without a watermark. To do this, you need to go to File, then select Render Project. In the export window, you can select an export directory and give the video a name. And then if you select the ProRes 422 preset, it will export the video with an alpha layer, which will make it transparent. And then you can simply click on Start Render, and then Particle Illusion will start exporting the video to the directory. And if the exporting is finished, you can close Particle Illusion and then go back to Premiere. Then inside Premiere, we've still got the title layer on the timeline. 
With this layer selected, we can head over to the Effect Controls panel and in there disable the Particle Illusion effect. We don't need this effect anymore because we've got the exported video here in this folder. We can now drag this video over to the timeline and place this on top of the title. And as you can see, the video is transparent and is a perfect fit with the title. In the next step, we're going to animate the reveal of the title. So make sure you've got the title layer selected, head over to the Effect Controls panel and click this Pen Tool icon. Then draw a mask in the Program Monitor, something like this. And if you finish the mask, go back to the Effect Controls panel and enable keyframes for Mask Path by clicking on this stopwatch icon here. After that, go a couple of frames back and then change the position of the mask. And now if I scrub to the timeline, you will see that the text gets revealed based on these two mask keyframes. Ok, that looks very nice. In the final steps we're going to stylize it all a bit more. First, let's move these two layers up to make some space for the background texture. For this I'm using this background steel texture image that I found on pixabay.com. It's a free one, I'll add the link in the description so you can check it out. As you can see this is a nice high resolution image, so I'm going to scale it down first. And then because we've got some fire and sparks going on, it's nice to darken this background and I'm going to do this inside the Lumetri color panel. First I'll lower the exposure and contrast, then lower the highlights into whites and also desaturate the image. Ok, this looks great, let's move on to the next layer where we're also going to use the same texture. In this case we're not going to scale it down, but we're going to nest this just to make sure that it doesn't affect the size of the text. So I'm going to right click and then select nest. Give the nested sequence a name and click OK. After that I'm going to head over to the effects panel and search for the track matte key effect and apply this to the second layer. With this layer selected we're going to head over to the effect controls panel. In there we're going to select layer 3, the text layer, as the matte layer for the track matte key effect. And as you can see now the texture is only visible on top of the text. In the final step we're going to add another effect and that's the drop shadow effect. I'm going to add this effect multiple times to layer number 2. Then go to the effect controls panel and then change the distance for the drop shadow effect. I'm going to stack these effects so the first one will be set to 1, the next one to 2, the next one to 4 and the other one to 8. I think we can add a couple more, let's do this and then change the distance to 16 and 32. Yes, that looks great, let's do a playback and see what we've created. And this also concludes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, then if you did then please like the video, that really helps me to grow my channel. Besides that, let me know in the comments if you would like to see another tutorial where I show you how I made my logo animation with Particle Illusion in After Effects. Anyway, as always, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.